Hey there, this is Dustin from Drone Tribe. Alright, so today we're going to go over sectional charts. These are some of the most difficult parts to master on the remote pilot knowledge test, but they're also one of the most important areas for real world commercial drone operations. This video is briefly going to go into how to read the sectional chart and how to use this info to pass your remote pilot test. At the end there will be five practice questions with solutions as well. All right, so reading the sectional chart is essential to understand what airspace your operations will be in and if you'll need ATC authorization. You'll also be able to see what type of hazards there are in that area. On the test, you'll generally be asked a question, then have to refer to a sectional chart area in the testing supplement. All right, so first up, we're going to take a look at the sectional chart over near Los Angeles. Um, so the first thing that we're going to see is this bright yellow. Uh, this on sectional charts is going to represent populated areas. So you'll see this on all these sectional charts. Um, if there's not this bright yellow, you're not going to have a very populated area. The second thing we're looking at now is the actual color of the uh, areas on the sectional chart. So um, I'm going to overlay this on the screen, um, but the different colors like the light green um, and slowly, slowly that shifts up to like a beige to like a soft yellow to a brown, um, that's an increase in elevation. Now this elevation is listed in MSL or uh, above mean sea level. This is typically how most aviation charts are listed um, for drone operators it's a little bit more convenient to have everything in AGL and um, specifically um, things like obstacles. So uh, we're going to take a look real quick. Um, there's uh, several different types of obstacles that are listed on the sectional chart. Um, in this case we'll go over a uh, group of obstacles or a single obstacle um, that is less than 1000 feet AGL. So right over here in this area you'll see um, single obstacles um, notated. Um, this one um, is at a above ground level um, elevation of 317 feet but it also has uh, MSL elevation of 2025. Um, these right here just notate like a group of obstacles together um, and so that but they're all under 1000 feet AGL. The uh, other symbol is when obstacles are greater than 1,000 feet AGL. Um, right here is one of these symbols, um, and it's notating that it's a group of objects um, over here, and in this case it's actually buildings um, that are 1,016 feet AGL. Now there's some other symbols um, that I'll overlay right here. So you have the... Um, guide wires that may extend from obstacles. Uh, you'll also have uh, occasionally a, a set of letters that appear um, near the obstacle um, like UC which would indicate that it's under construction. Alright so another important bit of information on sectional charts is the maximum elevation figure of a quadrant. Uh, a quadrant is a 30 minute by 30 minute um, area of latitude and longitude. Um, on these sectional charts. Um, I'm kind of highlighting that here. So uh, these are going to be indicated in a very large text um, in blue. Um, so right here in this uh, quadrant the maximum elevation figure is 7,500 feet. Um, so remember uh, in aviation generally the last two digits are knocked off when we're writing them on charts. So it's going to actually be 7,500 feet instead of 7,5. Um, now to determine the MEF of a quadrant um, we're going to be looking for the whether it's an obstacle um, or, or the actual elevation um, of the terrain and then um, adding different um, possibilities for error um, and rounding to get that maximum elevation figure. So in this example here um, we're taking a look around the highest elevation listed anywhere is 7124. Now this is the terrain here so this is a naturally occurring um, elevation so when that's the case uh, we're going to be adding 100 feet to um, 
allow for some possible vertical error. So we're at 7,224. We're going to add 200 feet for an obstacle allowance. So we're now at 7,424. And then we're going to be raising up to the following 100 feet level. So that'll get us to 7,500 feet. So that's how you get your maximum elevation figure of 7,500. Now this is a little bit different uh, if the uh, obstacle is man-made. Um, when it's man-made we're actually only going to be adding 100 feet of vertical error and then rounding up to the next 100. Um, so that's kind of how you determine these maximum elevation figures. This is definitely something that you'll need to know for the test. Airports are shown um, in different colors. So in this case, we'll have airports shown in blue, um, and these have a control tower. And then you'll also have airports shown in magenta, which do not have a control tower. Uh, then we have a lot of different types of airports, and specifically, it's really dictated by the types of runways. Um, so hard surface runways are generally 1,500 feet to 8,069 feet. Then there's those longer than that. Um, there are also private airports, military, abandoned, um, so on, helipads, everything. Um, so it's always good to know what type of runways you're dealing with uh, when you're dealing with these different airspaces for drone operations. In normal operations, you're probably not going to need to know this specific one. Um, tick marks around the basic airport uh, symbol, um, which indicates that fuel is available. Um, but you'll need to know it for the test. Uh, we're going to gloss over a couple items here. Um, first is airspace. Uh, we do have another video on that. Um, so you'll be reading the different airspace on sectional charts. Um, so there's specifics about Class Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and Golf airspace. Um, but see, there's also other types of miscellaneous airspace, so such as parachute jumping, um, glider operations, and more. Now, there's one additional thing here. Um, we do have another video on this, is radio frequency. Um, now, this can be found on the sectional chart, and basically there's a legend on the legend of the testing supplement on how to read these radio frequencies but these can be found um, next to every airport. Now, a couple other things, we'll just let these pop up on the screen. So um, we'll have wind turbines um, with the highest uh, wind turbine listed um, with their, generally it's their height listed in MSL, but occasionally it's their AGL. Um, occasionally it is listed as UC under construction. Um, we'll also have railroads, uh, normal roads, road markers, bridges, piers, tunnels. Um, you'll also see these a lot, uh, power transmission and telecommunication lines. You also have different types of water um, notated, whether it's um, open or closed uh, water. Now, um, there's different types of special use airspace, so prohibited, alert areas, military operations, MOAs. There's a lot happening here. Um, what I would suggest you do is take a look at the legend in the testing supplement um, because this will have a full list and this is something that you actually have access to on the test. So I definitely recommend getting familiar with where to find things, different definitions. So just to recap, there's many different items to read on a sectional chart and it's really important for not only passing the remote pilot knowledge test, but it's really important for the real world, um, which is why we're going to jump into some sample questions right now. All right, so question one, what is the elevation in AGL or above ground level of the highest wind turbine obstruction? Um, so this is in figure 69, area five, of the uh, testing supplement. Uh, when we flip over to that, uh, we'll be able to see uh, this area five here. Um, we actually do have an elevation here, AGL listed um, of the highest wind tur turbine. Um, that's gonna be 487 feet. Um, generally though, this can be listed in MSL um, and it will specify that um, if it is MSL. Uh, question two, what is the AGL of the obstruction that operates high-intensity lights 
that is located approximately 48 degrees 3 minutes north latitude and 101 degrees 24 minutes west longitude. Alright, so we're going to refer to figure 21. Um, I've already brought up the quadrant that um, is going to have these coordinates in it. Um, when we take a look, uh, going from the 101 degrees, um, 24 minutes is going to be 24 of these tick marks. And then, uh, so we're kind of looking in this area here. And then uh, latitude 48 degrees, 3 minutes is going to be 3 tick marks up. So we're looking at a latitude over here. Uh, when we combine those, uh, we're going to see this is kind of where they inter intersect, and it's also where the obstruction with high intensity lights is located. Um, that's indicated right here. Uh, the AGL is going to be 1,031 uh, feet. This number here listed is actually the MSL, the 3,149. So this is the height above mean sea level, and this is going to be the height above uh, ground level. Question three, what is the maximum elevation figure for the quadrant that contains Fostoria Airport? So this is in figure 59, and it's going to be south of area five. So we're taking a look. Uh, Fostoria is right over here. Um, we're also just looking at this quadrant right here. Uh, again, this is a 30 minute by 30 minute uh, latitude longitude section on the sectional chart. Um, so I'm gonna cheat. I know that it's gonna be this big blue um, set of letters here, so 1,400 feet. Now, why is that? Um, and that is because over here, you're gonna have a, a naturally occurring um, actually no this is not naturally occurring this is a man-made obstacle um, so in this case we're going to be taking this MSL so 1292 feet and we're going to be adding 100 feet um, and then we're we're at 1392 feet so that 100 feet was added for um, potential vertical error and then we're going to round up to the next 100 so that's how you get up to 1400 feet all right, so question four, what kind of activity is conducted at the Byron Airport that would be of importance to remote pilot in command? Uh, now this is figure 74, area two of the testing supplement. Um, so when we're gonna be taking a look, taking a look at Byron, uh, we see these two symbols here. Um, if we were to look at the legend in the uh, testing supplement, uh, that's page one, um, you'll see that this indicates glider operations and this indicates uh, parachuting uh, skydiving operations. Um, fairly straightforward, and this was just strictly based off of reading the legend. Now, the last question, uh, question five, the flag symbol located at Ridgeland Airport is, um, now we're gonna refer to figure 23, area three. Uh, that will be over here. You'll see this flag symbol. Um, it's going, going to indicate a visual checkpoint to identify the position for the in, initial um, call out for these manned aircraft entering the Savannah Class C airspace over here. Um, now this is something that you don't necessarily need to be monitoring in the real world. Um, it's ideal that you would have a radio so you can, you know, if you're performing operations in this area, to know that there are aircraft coming in. Um, but for the test, you'll just need to know what this symbol means um, and, and exactly what's happening with that. All right, so uh, if you like this video, um, we have three other videos in this series um, and we're adding more continuously. So we have a video on airspace as well as METARs and TAFs. And then finally on radio frequencies. Um, this was Dustin at Drone Tribe. Um, if you liked what you um, got to learn here, be taught a little bit, um, definitely subscribe to this channel um, because there'll be more uh, information not only about passing your remote pilot knowledge test, but also about starting uh, your own commercial drone operation. All right, thanks.